Okay, here's the third lesson for chapter 8. Um, this is the second lesson on cosine law. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the cosine law to find an unknown angle when we know all three sides. Okay? Um, previously in chapter 8, chapter 8 is trigonometry of acute triangles. Okay? Previously in chapter 8, we learned about the sine law, and we learned about when we can use that to help us solve for an unknown angle or side in an acute triangle. Um, and in our last lesson, we learned about the cosine law and how you can use the cosine law um, to solve for an unknown side if you know the other two sides. If you know, okay, so if you know the other two sides, I know these two, and their contained angle, I can find the third side. Okay, we learned that lesson yesterday, or sorry, that was the last lesson. And the lesson today, we're going to find another use for the cosine law. Okay, the other use for the cosine law is if you know all three sides and you want to find an angle. Okay, you can use the cosine law in that scenario as well. Okay, so that's what today's lesson is going to focus on. Let's just remember what the cosine law is. We learned last lesson that the cosine law tells us that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cos a. Okay, and similarly for the other two sides, okay, for b and c, um, there's similar equations here. So the cosine law is in three equations depending on which side or which angle you are looking for. That depends on which um, equation you're going to use. Okay? So like I said last lesson, we used this to find an unknown side when we knew two sides and a contained angle. So when we knew these two and their contained angle, we could find the third side. Today, focusing on um, scenario two where we know all three sides and we're looking for this contained. We're looking for um, any of the angles actually. Okay? So if we know three sides, we can find any of the angles using the cosine law. Okay? You could just plug in, um, since you know all three sides, um, choose the equation. So if we wanted to find angle B, you would choose this equation here, the middle one that has angle B in it. Plug in all the side lengths that you know. We know all of them. And then your only variable left would be angle B. You could solve for it. What I'm going to do is do a general um, rearrangement of this equation. Um, that way we don't have to all keep rearranging it whenever we're trying to find an angle. I'll isolate the angle right off the bat for us here. Okay? So how do we find angle A? Okay, if I know all three sides, well the cosine law, I'm going to choose, oh sorry, first of all I'm going to choose this equation here because that has angle A in it. Okay, so I'm just going to do a general rearrangement of this equation to, to solve for angle A. So I know a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. I want to get cos a by itself. Okay, So I'm going to move b squared and c squared to the other side. So I'm going to subtract them to the other side. Because they are positive on the right, they will be negative on the left side of the equation. Okay, negative 2. I'm just going to rewrite that a little clearer. b squared equals negative 2 b c cos a. To get cos a by itself, because it's being multiplied by negative 2 times b times c, I have to divide the negative 2 times b times c to the other side. a squared minus b squared minus c squared is going to be over negative 2 b c. And that will be equal to cosine of A. If I rearrange the other two equations, so if I rearranged um, the second equation and isolated cosine of B, and if I rearrange this one and isolated cosine of C, this is what I would get here in this red box here, which I'm now circling in green. Okay, I would get these three equations. Okay. Um, what you want to do is look at the pattern so that you could generalize this to triangles that don't have their sides angles labeled with A, B, and C, okay? So if I'm looking for angle A, the equation is the cosine of angle A equals A squared. So the, the side opposite angle A is A. So I start with A squared, and then I subtract the square of the other two sides. So subtract B squared and subtract C squared. And then I divide by negative 2 times those other two sides, B and C. For angle B, I start with side B squared and then subtract the squares of the other two sides, A and C. And then divide by negative 2 times those other two sides, A and C. For angle C, I subtract the squares of the other two sides, 
from side C. And I divide by two times those other two sides. Okay, so that's the um, that's that's rearranged um, to find the angles. Okay, so if I want to find angle A, I would plug in my sides A, B, and C, where I see A, B, and C, and do the inverse cos of that solution to find angle A. Okay, if my triangle was let's say triangle D E F D E F and I was looking for let's say angle E okay I could generalize what I see here I know the cosine of angle E would be equal to side E squared and then like these ones I'm going to subtract the squares of the other two sides so I'm going to subtract F squared and D squared and then divide that by negative two times those other two sides, F and D. Okay? So that's that equation generalized to a different triangle that wasn't labeled with A, B, and C. Okay? So hopefully you can see how I did that. Let's do a couple of examples now. Okay? So if I wanted to solve for angle A of this triangle, um, I'm given the other three sides, so I know I can use the cosine law. That's one of the scenarios I use the cosine laws when I'm given three sides and I'm asked for an angle. Um, I'm going to use um, one of these rearranged cosine law formulas that are used for solving for angles. Okay, I'm going to use the one that has angle A because that's the angle I'm looking for. So I'm going to use cosine of angle A. So first of all, let's write down what I'm given. I'm given side A, which is 8. Side A is across from angle A. I'm given side B, which is across from angle B, which is 9. And I'm given side C, which is across from angle C which is 10. Okay, Plug everything I know into um, this equation. So I'm, I want to solve for angle A, so I don't know angle A yet. So cos of A is equal to A squared minus the squares of the other two sides, minus 9 squared minus 10 squared, all over negative 2 times the product of those other two sides, 9 and 10. Okay. All we're going to do now is put this in on our calculator. Okay. Make sure you put it in the way I'm about to show you because I don't want you guys making mistakes on putting it in on your calculator, um, especially if you understand what you're doing here. Try not to make a mistake on your calculator. Okay. So what you're going to do, you're first going to evaluate the numerator. You're going to do 8 squared minus 9 squared minus 10 squared. You're going to evaluate that numerator, hit enter. That's negative 117. Okay? Now, we want to divide this. Okay? If you, if you want, okay, you could just, if you're not confident using your calculator, I would write the expression that I evaluated my numerator right there. And then I would go ahead and evaluate my denominator. Negative 2, times 9 times 10, that is negative 180. Negative, negative 180. I would then, I would then remember if I have the cosine of an angle equals a ratio, and I know the ratio, to figure out the angle, I have to do the inverse cos of that ratio. Okay? Negative 117 over negative 180. I have to do inverse cos because that's the notation that will tell my calculator that what I'm inputting is, is a ratio, not an angle. Okay? So if I do inverse cos, my calculator knows I'm putting in a ratio and it'll tell me the angle that goes with that. Okay? So if I put that in on my calculator, do inverse cos, so second cos of negative 117 divided by negative 180. Okay. My calculator will evaluate that and tell me it's 49.5 when I round that to the nearest tenth. So angle A equals 49.5. Okay. How I do this, um, how you might do this on your calculator if you're confident with this, okay, is you will, so after you've plugged everything into your equation here, what you can do, you can just do A 8 squared minus 9 squared minus 10 squared 
Okay, it equals, and then we want to divide that by the product on our inner denominator here. So we have to tell our calculator to do that multiplication first so that it divides the whole product, so we have to put it in brackets. So we're going to divide our answer by negative 2 times 9 times 10 and make sure that that product is in brackets so our calculator does that multiplication first and then divides that whole product by the answer. We get 0.65. So that tells us that this whole ratio here is 0.65. And then to figure out the angle, we would do the second cosine of 0.65. And negative 117 over neg negative 180 is 0.65. So do second cosine of that answer. And that is, once again, 49.5. So you can see, if you're good working with your calculator, you can skip a lot of these steps, get right to your angle. Um, at first, though, just do the numerator evaluate it, do the denominator, evaluate it, and then um, do the inverse cos of that ratio so your calculator will tell you the angle. Okay? One, once you get good at using your calculator, you might be able to skip to this. Okay? Let's just do a couple more quick examples just to make sure we have this down here. Okay? So if I want to solve for angle B, I'm given all three sides of the triangle. Therefore, I know I can use the cosine law to solve for an unknown angle. I'm going to use the cosine law equation that has angle B involved. So I'm going to use this one. Let's write down what we know. We know A is 13. We know B is 12. Whoops. We know B is 12. And we know C is 10. Okay. Plug all of that into our cosine law equation that has angle B. So I know cos of angle B is equal to b squared, 12 squared, minus the squares of the other two sides, so minus 13 squared, minus 10 squared, all over negative 2 times the product of those other two sides, 13 and 10. Okay. Once again, let's go through and do this one step at a time. Let's evaluate the numerator. So we'll do 12 squared minus 13 squared minus 10 squared. Okay, evaluate that. I get negative 125. I'm going to put that down here. Negative 125. Let's evaluate our denominator. Okay, negative 2 times 13 times 10. That gives us negative 260. Negative 260. Now we know if I know the ratio and I don't know the angle to figure out the angle, I have to do the inverse cosine of that ratio. Negative 125 over negative 260. If I do the inverse cosine, my calculator knows I'm putting in a ratio, not an angle, and therefore it'll tell me the angle. Okay? So inverse cosine of negative 125 divided by negative 260. Okay. Now I get 61.3. So angle B equals 61.3. Just remember, whenever you're solving for an angle, you're always going to use the inverse trig functions. Okay. Whenever you're looking for an angle, inverse trig functions. Okay, good. One more example where our triangle isn't labeled A, B, and C. Okay, I have all three sides of the triangle. I'm looking for an angle, so I know I can use the cosine law, but none of these ones have N, K, and M in it, so I'm going to have to make my own. Okay, I know the cosine of an angle should be equal to its opposite side, so its opposite side is 13, 13 squared, minus the squares of the other two sides. Minus 14 squared. So minus 14 squared minus 16 squared all over negative 2 times those other two sides, 14 and 16. The two sides that aren't opposite the angle are 14 and 16. Okay. So essentially what I have here, I should have wrote the general equation first. Um, let me see if I can 
just move this down so I can put that up here just so if I lost you guys here um, hopefully I can regain you. Okay, so I'm just going to make a general equation before I I, sh I, I should have done that before I went ahead and did this here. So if this is my triangle here, I know the cosine of angle K equals side K squared minus the squares of the other two sides, side N and side M. So minus N squared minus M squared. And that should all be over negative 2 times the two sides that aren't opposite angle K. So the other two sides are N and M. N and M. Okay, so and the information that I know, I know all three sides. I know K is 13, I know N is 16, and I know M is 14. Okay, and then I just plugged all of that information into here. It doesn't matter the order of N and M as long as in your equation here, if we're looking for angle K, we do K squared minus the squares of their two sides. We could do K squared minus M squared minus M squared, or K squared minus M squared minus M squared. It doesn't matter the order of these two. Okay? So I knew all three sides. I plugged it into this equation here, and this is what I got. And then you just go ahead and plug that in on your calculator. Okay? And we can figure out angle K. We'll do step by step again. So cosine of angle K is equal to, let's do the numerator. Numerator first, we just do 13 squared minus 14 squared minus 16 squared. That gives us negative 283 all over negative 2 times 14 times 16. That gives us negative 448. Okay. To find out angle K, I have to use inverse cosine. Whenever we're finding angles, we use the inverse trig function. So inverse cosine of that ratio. By using inverse cosine, that tells my calculator that I don't know the angle. Um, so please tell me the angle. Okay. So inverse cosine of negative 283 divided by negative 448. That gives me 50.8. Okay. So angle K equals 50.8 degrees. Okay. So that's it for the lesson for today. If you have any questions, let me know. So that's it for cosine law. Um, we know sine law as well. That's all we're going to learn for um, acute triangles. Uh, and that's it for the year, actually. So after this, just getting ready for the exam. Okay, see you guys.